John chapter 14 verse 12. And he said, verily, verily. In other words, I stake my reputation at this statement I'm about to make. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than this shall he do because I go to the father. Hallelujah. My, my plan initially was to take out time to expound on the concept of greater works because I found from scripture that it's not really what we think. Hallelujah. When the Bible talks about greater works, it's, it's really not... I used to look at it from a perspective until the Lord opened up my eyes. When, when the Bible talks about greater works, uh, he's not just talking about greater miracles, greater this. No, 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 no. He's talking about something entirely different. Hallelujah. And so we're talking about greater works tonight. And uh, I'm not going to be dwelling so much, uh, trying to give us the revelation of what greater works is. I'm going to be teaching us the principles hallelujah the principles how to step in many times we've we've discussed issues but we've not taught the principles the people need to step in it like pastor was saying the end of this meeting is that we are equipped with the principles that we can step in there's no point telling you even if you don't know what greater works is if you can know the principles you walk in it we're discussing with pastor this afternoon and i was telling him that many of the apostles who walked in the gifts of the spirit they didn't know them to be called the gifts of the spirit it was paul that taught the church as the gift of the spirit they manifested the word of knowledge and never called it the word of knowledge paul put it because he was trying to explain it to the corinthian church so what it is is really not as important as entering the experience hallelujah praise the lord so my, my point of emphasis tonight is going to be the price for greater works. We're going to be sharing the price. What is the price? Many of us have seen demonstrations of the anointing. We've seen men walk in the realms of glory. And, 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 and for many of us, we have been finding out, God, is it that you love some people and don't love some people? What, what, what are these principles? How can I step in into a dimension, into a reality? It looks as if the heavens are perpetually opened over some people. And then it looks like for others, they have to try to tear the curtains of eternity open. The things I'll be sharing with you tonight will open you up to a realm where you will literally live under open heavens. How many of you believe it? There's no point listening if you don't believe it. Because the Bible says, blessed is she that believes. It said, for unto her, not unto everybody, unto her that believes, there shall be a performance. Shall be a performance only for them that believe. Hallelujah. Greater works. Greater authority. Exousia. I said it yesterday. The ability to stand in the capacity of a man. Though frail as you are, but you control territories because you represent a government that is not bounded by the limitations of men. And so God is equipping men who will stand. We don't need to be everywhere. This is the concept of authority. A king must not be everywhere for his authority to be felt. All he needs is that that territory understands that he is king. And so a king can stand from one point and make decrees from the headquarters and everywhere within his jurisdiction will move at the impulse of his power. The Bible says that he has made us unto our God, kings, controllers of territories. We are the ones who are called principalities. Though we look frail in ourselves, but we represent a government that is not limited. And so when we stand and make decrees from the second heavens, there is a ripple effect in the realm of the spirit because it's not just an ordinary man that is speaking. It's not grammar. You are speaking light. There is a frequency and a power, an ability that transcends this time and transcends distance. And so when you make certain decrees, they become laws in the realm of the spirit. And men do not understand why a man will make a statement. And animate and inanimate things will respond to it. Exousia. The ability to represent a government. The ability to stand in the shoes of I am. 
He said, as the Father has sent me, I now transfer my mantle upon you. Elijah, I told us about the concept of Elijah yesterday. The water did not split because he was Elisha. He carried what Elijah carried. And when Jesus was about to ascend to heaven, he gave us his mantle. The mantle that Jesus carried was the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And that mantle empowered him to go about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. So now he has given us the opportunity to step in his shoes. And he's saying, you may be frail, but you are still an ambassador. He said, I give you exousia over scorpions, snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. Listen, you have authority over the powers of Satan. You have authority. Um, what you do not have over Satan is power. Look up. You do not have, there is nowhere in scripture that says we have power over Satan. What we have is authority. That's the reason why you cannot gather all the demons in the world and say we summon you in Kaduna. Be bound. Don't move forever. No, it has not been given to you. What you have is authority. The ability to dismiss them within any territory that you find yourself. That's the reason why you can't sit down except by the ministry of intercession. You cannot sit down and just make decrees and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, we capture all the demons in the world. Summon yourself here. Don't move. No. I see people do that. That's error. That's error. Remember, while Jesus walked upon the earth, something interesting happened because when Jesus walked upon the earth, the Bible makes us to understand that when he was sending the 70, he was test running exousia upon them. He said, look, because I have not yet been glorified, my authority is not everywhere because I am a man. It is only within the territory of Israel. Do not go outside that territory. It will not work. And he told them, maintain that territory. I told you about territories yesterday and every time they went within the jurisdiction of that territory they saw miracles and 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 there were supernatural demonstrations of the spirit and they came back saying lord even the demons subject to your name and he said i saw satan falling like lightning and when he arose he said now because i have conquered death every territory has been opened you are no more bounded to one place go i mandate you i give you exousia the ability to stand in my capacity represent me everywhere the results will be the same and so god is raising a generation of men and women that will not give excuses for our frailty because it is not about you. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of power may not be of us. You may look frail. You may be a lady. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with the understanding of the government you represent. Let me tell you something. Our generation will live on earth as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. Because I can tell you that Satan has never been the issue. I, I, I get irritated the way people have emphasized teachings on devils and doctrines and trying to teach the manipulations of Satan. Everything the Bible teaches us about the realm of the kingdom of darkness is sufficient. Don't go and dig more information that is not in the Bible. We teach on all kinds of things. Seven strata of the demonic kingdom. Who cares? I have given you exousia. I don't care how many strata, 666, 12, 12, 12, that's their business. From Satan to everybody, I have given you exousia. Everywhere you show up, the manifestations of the sun, the bondage of corruption is going to be lifted because a principality, one who understands the concept of authority and territory, step in. He said, Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. In other words, your enemies notwithstanding, rule thou. Hallelujah. And so we have all kinds of believers give stupid excuses and say it's because of Satan. Are you getting blessed? But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory. 
You're the lifter of my head. But thou, oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. Hallelujah. Before I start tonight's teaching, can we pray in the spirit in one moment and say, Lord, Satan is not an issue for me again. I represent you. I represent your government. Go ahead and pray. If you are not praying, you can go home. Pray. Authority has been mandated to certain kinds of people. Principalities rule down. Satan notwithstanding. The system notwithstanding. Rule down in the midst of your enemies. The cause in your village notwithstanding, the demons notwithstanding, they are not the issue. Your lack of revelation is the issue. Come on, lift up your voice and raise a cry. I am a principality. Oh, hallelujah. I represent the highest embassy of all the ages. Everywhere I show up, I have in me the ability to lift up the bondage of corruption. For the NS expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of this song. We are stepping in in power, stepping in in authority. We are not bowing to any situation. But thou, oh Lord, oh Lord, had a shield for me. Oh my glory. to you in very basic terms what greater works me. The president of Nigeria when he makes a statement look up and he makes a decree it is only valid within the territory of Nigeria. Is that correct? Is that correct? But when the president of America makes a decree it's valid everywhere and all the African countries here are you following me now? Jesus said, because I will arise, the territory, the jurisdiction of your words, the jurisdiction of your influence, the jurisdiction of your manifestation and operation will be widened and spread so that you are not just bounded to Israel, but that everywhere you stand and make decrees, I will show you that the works of God are his words. Are you following me now? The Bible says that kings reign by their words. It says where the word of a king is, there is power. And God said, let there be light. And the influence and the force of his word, coming from the realm of eternity, all factors notwithstanding, light was. And that was the dimension in Ezekiel chapter 37. The prophet was standing with dry bones. And he said, son of man, can these bones live? And he said, Lord, I don't mean to doubt you, but based on what I see, only thou knowest. And he said, I want to teach you something about territory and dominion. I am going to give you the words, but you will speak. He said, prophesy. Tell these bones, can they hear none of your business? You just speak. And he said, as he decreed, there was a sound from the second heavens it was not responding to the prophet's words it was responding to whoever was representing the government of heaven if a stone spoke at the instruction of the spirit there will still be that sound see the reason why many people have not been able to walk in the anointing is because we feel it's about us one of the things that i'm teaching in this conference is how to die how to step out of the way and be a vessel that carries only the life of god and you will see a demonstration of power like you have never seen. 
greater works mean greater manifestation of his authority the ability to stand and speak let me show you quickly from scripture before we continue john hallelujah john chapter 14 verse 10 are you there john 14 verse 10 i don't plan to dwell on this there's a lot to cover hallelujah Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words, say after me, the words. Can you see it there? All right, let's continue. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. What is Jesus saying? He's saying, I speak to you, but the Father doeth the works. This is the secret of miracles. Many people do not understand. Jesus never said I do the works. He said I speak. But there is a father that you cannot see. From the realm of glory. He doeth the works. He does the creative miracles. He does the manifestations that men cannot understand. All that they see in the scene is me. But there is one that you cannot see. He doeth the works. Hmm. Exousia. The ability to stand. That when you make decrees, people wonder, oh, I, I mean, you're just talking and saying everybody, cancers will drop and all of that. But there is one. He calls him the father. The father there, I'm not talking of the father in heaven. Because Jesus said, the father who is in me. Who is the father in him? The word father there means my source and sustainer. Paracletos. The one who lives in him. He said, although he is unseen. Friends, behind the scenes. Is the one who is putting all the laws together to make sure that that which is decreed. Because you are not speaking on behalf of yourself. See, the sons of Skiva did not understand the concept of territories and authority. And they came and drew one and they said, we adjure you by their power and their strength. Because their father was a priest. And the demon said, oh, you have missed, you have broken a major law in the realm of the spirit. And we are going to show you that you have broken this law today. And they say, we adjure you. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Is it not the real Jesus who Paul preaches? Notwithstanding, there are laws in the realm of the glory. There are principles. That's why Paul speaking to Timothy said, if a man strives for mastery, he said, yet is he not crowned until he strives lawfully. With the understanding of the laws that command that kind of result. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, that he that believes in me. You see this fear of influence and this authority that I'm functioning in? He said that a time will come when you will step in my shoes and even do greater things. Because until then there was no report that, that his manifestation was beyond Israel. It was just within Israel. And he's saying a time will come you will do greater works. In other words, the sphere of influence will widen and you will step in my shoes. And as you speak... The father who is in me, who will come into you right now, will do the works. Will do the works. God gave me this revelation and it exploded my life. I have never tried to do God's work. I have always stand, stood to speak on his behalf as his ambassador. He doeth the works. How many times have we failed woefully because we are trying to do what has not, is not within the jurisdiction of our assignment. We try to grow legs. We try to heal the sick. He said, the words that I speak are not my words. In other words, I represent a government. And because I represent a government, my father in me, that you do not see. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. God is alert and active, watching over his word to perform. His alert, amplified says, and he's active. In other words, he's just watching. Speak, ambassador. That's why the Bible says that ye shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass not because you are macho but there is a government hallelujah many people just run into the miracle ministry just run and keep hitting their head left right center today they come and they touch the laws by mistake and you see things happen and they cannot reproduce it. Mastery is the ability to reproduce a result again and again and again and again and again and again. That's what made Jesus invincible. They said, what kind of man is this?
Hallelujah. And tonight I'm going to be sharing with us the price for greater works. You want to be able to make decrees and for territories to answer. You want to allow your body to become a superconductor of the anointing. That everything around you begins to drip out the anointing. That you perform more miracles unconsciously than you do consciously. A dimension where everything in you can release the life and the power of God. I'm going to be sharing with us a principle. If you have ever prayed and said, Lord, more power, more grace, tonight is your meeting. If you have ever prayed and said, Lord, I know that I'm not ordinary. There's got to be something. My generation must hear my voice. If you have ever prayed and said, Lord, how come demons don't respect me? Tonight is the meeting. I'd like you to be open, friends. Because the first thing that, the first dimension of impartation tonight is the impartation that comes through the word. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. It says, and the spirit entered me when he did speak unto me and set me upon my feet. And the spirit entered me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God most high. You are Jesus Christ. You're the Hallelujah of Israel. Sing Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ is the Hallelujah of Israel. Sing Hallelujah. revelation I want you to know tonight is that for every dimension of glory in the spirit there is a price to pay. Don't let anybody fool you. That's the first revelation we are starting with tonight. That there is a price and I'm going to explain to you what that price is. What I mean by price because we have some religious folks who are always praying the price. There's nothing in their life to show for what they claim to be the price. I've seen people who have attempted to pay prices and I tell you the truth, they have been paying this price for long enough for a result and we have not seen anything. So something is wrong. We are going to be understanding what the Bible calls the price. Hallelujah. Tonight is a believer's meeting. Tonight is a meeting for those who truly desire the glory. Not just for those who came for our glory and fire conference. Tonight, the Lord is going to be answering the innate cry of somebody. Tonight, God is going to be explaining to us our experiences that we do not understand. And he will show us where in prophecy that we need to align and step. You know that song that says, um, show us the ancient part. Many people have called many things ancient parts. <laughs> called religion ancient parts. Called their denominations ancient parts. We know what the Bible calls ancient parts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So there is a price to pay. Say after me, a price to pay. There is always a price to pay, friends. Every time you see a vessel of God stand and there is real glory flowing from that man, make no mistakes. Even if he has abused that glory, he paid a price. Now, but we, of course, when I talk now, I'm not talking about King's glory. I'm talking generally because I believe some of these videos will go to other ministries. Hallelujah. But many believers, and, and unfortunately, sir, many ministers and fathers, 
have cheated us, we young people, by not telling us what they did that has put them in that plane of victory. They've, they've not been honest enough to tell us. All that they tell, they make it so easy. They make it know that uh, you just catch this faith and then boom, your life begins to work. But that's not the truth. The Bible doesn't teach that. And so, we young people want to get to their realm in one day simply because you package the seed and you said, someone walked up to me one, one time and he knelt down and said, he wants the grace upon my life. I told him, stand up and walk away. Walk out of my face. That's nonsense because that's the kind of rubbish that people are, are, are teaching around. You can buy a man's depth of experience in the spirit with 5,000 naira. Who told you? The apostle said, your money perish with you. There is a price that no man can pay for you, friends. And this is what I want to, I want all of us to stand in a threshold of glory. I really want all of us at the end of this meeting to enter a dimension. So there is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. And can I tell you something? The Bible says narrow is the way. I said it yesterday. Many people teach that narrow is the way that leads to heaven. No, sir. The Bible never says narrow is the way that leads to heaven. The Bible says Jesus is the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life. Which life? What kind of life? It's the location of a realm. He said that road is narrow. The word narrow entails constraint and discipline. No room for carelessness. I've studied the life. When I see people manifest the anointing, I'm really not interested in the result. I stand and I say, Lord, open my eyes. What laws are these people operating in? What, 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 how is their spirit aligning to the Holy Ghost? Whenever I watch program and I see men moving in the anointing, I truly, of course, I celebrate the miracles, but that's not what I'm looking for. My spirit starts searching. It's like booting a computer and I'm searching in the realm of the spirit. What law? Where did this man touch in this realm? What did he touch in God that commanded, that granted him access? The Bible says, I have not seen. Ear has not heard. He said, it has not entered the heart of any man. That which God has in store for them that love him. He said, but God, some people bought their way into the spirit until they taught something about God. And God said, although these are archives and mysteries that are not permitted for men, you have made me, you have taught something in me and I will grant unto you the revelation of the holy things of the spirit. So when I see men standing and I see that what is possible for one is not possible for another, it provokes my spirit to begin to search. right now many people have believed and have been taught that money can do everything so what happens is you just run and what, let me tell you something money cannot do everything books cannot do everything you a man son one of the reasons why we have a bunch of lazy and non-serious believers who cannot truly walk in the anointing is because um i'm not against reading books but we have read too many books are you following me now? And so, a man of God shares his experience of 20 years in 40 leaves. And you carry it and read it once. And you suddenly think you will walk in it. You think so? There are balls and knots that must be thoroughly aligned for your spirit to begin to operate in that frequency. And until that happens, forget it. Except you just join the queue of people who are stage managing all kinds of garbages in church. But we are talking of real apostolic power to change territories where you become a principality and the nations will be submitted to you he said that even the devils are subject to us at thy name not at our looks at thy name at thy authority the price for spiritual power having established the fact that there is a price to pay we are going to be examining the price very quickly. I will not waste your time with many garbages and revelation. I will go straight to the point. Because I want it to enter your spirit. That it will be seated in you. If you have ever cried and said, Lord, what is the road to the glory? What is, what is the map? Where is it in the spirit? I want to show you by revelation. 
principles. Hallelujah. Number one. Please, if you will not use it, don't write it. I told God something. I said, Lord, honestly speaking, I value these things I'm about to share because friends, when you see ministers come and talk to you like this, some of the things they are sharing is a product of sweat and tears and blood. People have paid the price to bring these things. But then the Bible says freely. That's why, see, some ministers is because they respect what they have so much that somehow they go to the flesh and say, you must pay for it. It's a way of making you respect what they have gone through. And they feel, if I just give you like that, you will not listen. And so the person will say, I will, say, I will preach it in a studio alone. You must buy the tape, 3,000 naira. I'm not, I'm not talking about what our pastor said yesterday. That one, you must do it. I like it, pastor. Hallelujah. That's why there are ministers that don't like congregations. They like studio. Because they feel congregations have an insultive way of not respecting your revelation. You stand up and you are sharing something that you paid price for and somebody stretches his leg and is snoring right in front of you. And now, you may laugh about it, but it's, it's, it's not funny. Are you following me now? That's why you see some ministers have developed all kinds of temperaments. Now, I'm not justifying them. That's still wrong. But I tell you the truth. If you have caught something, there is a jealousy you put on it. That's why God is called a jealous God. If you have really caught something, except you've not caught anything, if you truly have found a treasure, the Bible says the kingdom of God is like a treasure. Someone entered a farm and found coin. And he said, what? You mean this is here? He sold everything. He's not a fool. When you have caught something, there is a jealousy. Jealousy is not evil. Jealousy is like a gun. It depends on who is holding it. If the army is holding it, good for you. If an armed robber is holding it, bad for you. Jealousy is that factor that makes you preserve a thing. Without jealousy, you can. Without jealousy in your relationship or your ministry or your life. If someone comes and slaps a member of King's Glory, it's the jealousy Pastor has on him. That's why God said, I'm a jealous God. You touch any of my child, I will show you he represents me. The reason why somebody touches you and goes cut free is you are not representing anybody. The day you start representing a government, you become fearful. Many of you, Satan kicks you left, right and center because it is not recorded in the realm of the spirit that you are representing any government. And so from the village, from wherever, everything happens. Let me tell you something. Find out what happens in the day of Daniel. The days of Daniel. They attempted Daniel. 24 hours was not too much and the lions ate them. That's what happens when you toy around. You say, touch not my anointed. Let me add. I'm not adding to scripture. I'm just trying to help you understand. Touch not my anointed who is representing me, not whose God is his belly. I'm burning this issue of exousia because many of us have entered the territory of Satan believing that I felt power in my hand and my hand is shaking. And so you put your confidence in the shaking of your hand. You say, now I'm going to touch him with this shaking hand and you'll be you told you so. There's nowhere in the scripture that says demons will bow because your hand is shaking. They will bow only to the name of the Lord. Teaching us principles of authority. See, God is producing lions out of us. That you may be an ordinary man just looking and laughing. But when you step into that office, you will arise and roar. And when you roar, there will be a ripple effect to the nation. That's how I am convinced that I don't need to be everywhere in the world to change the world. I am convinced. God is already everywhere. I don't need to be everywhere. All I need to do is represent him properly and we will shake the world. I am convinced that I cannot gather the whole world on a crusade ground. But I am also convinced that there is a realm of glory that we will hit. That we can stand in our offices and make decrees that will shake nations. Lord, take us to that realm tonight. Number one. Now, let me explain what I mean by price. First of all, write it. Please write it. Write the price and then write dash. You need to 
move by the definition I'm giving you because it's by the Spirit. Because there are many religious people who, when they hear the price, will say, Yes, the price. We have been saying this thing. No. The price. And so, what happens? You pray for 42 hours and stand up and believe that because you prayed, every devil must answer you. And you speak to them and they don't even mind you. And you're like, Come, Abba. God, who was I praying to? And then you fast for one week, seven days dry, and come out, and you still talk to them, and they behave as if they don't know you. How many of you have seen people like that? They are fasting every day, they are praying every day, nothing is moving. Let me tell you what is wrong. It's not that their fasting is wrong, but the connection has been lost from the beginning. Because they do not understand that there is nothing you can add to the finished work of Christ. Realize that. Realize that. So when we are talking about the price, we are not talking about adding to what Jesus has done. No, sir. Many people have wasted precious fastings, precious prayer points, uh, and prayer times because they believe that they are adding to what Jesus has done. And devil says, no, sir. This is not the principle that opens up the gates. But every time you fast, pray, build yourself with an understanding of the government and the authority and the finished work of Christ, you become an explosive fire. Are you getting blessed? Open up the gates. Eight. Open up the doors. I'm about to share something powerful. Can we sing this song?